Welcome to Barley and Hops. I'm George. Today's a special day. As always, we're here with you. Uh, and we're here to talk about brewing or distilling again. But what makes it even more special today is it's the 4th of July. And it's not just a day of celebration, but it's also a day of remembrance. And it's a day to stop, just to pause, and to be thankful that you and I live in a country that's just so wonderful and full of so many freedoms. We owe that freedom to so many people. We owe that freedom to each other. So please enjoy your day today and the many weekends ahead uh, as a free American. I will never apologize for being an American. All right, um, right to it. Look, a couple of days ago, well, actually a little bit over a week ago, uh, we were doing, um, gosh, we were doing a bunch of things we did on video. I think if you recall, we, I think we were doing some kind of a wine, but if I, I brought out one of the mashes that we did and I used the Turbo Clear to, to try to clear all the sediment in it. Remember, if you can recall, it was almost crystal clear. As a matter of fact, we had it right here in front of the counter. It was almost crystal clear. Well, guess what? I had a chance to run that the other day. And I ran that through my Turbo 500 while I was here in the shop. I may have, well, you never know. I was doing something here that day, but oh, by the way, here's what happened. At the end of the uh, at the end of my process, I wound up with three quarters of a gallon of 180 proof, and then I just shut it off because I kind of got tired. Uh, it was only about three, three and a half hours of runtime. So uh, I got, it's out of crystal clear. And you know what? Today's just one of those great days, and you know how I feel about it. I can tell you, partner, is that was made in America. All right. I just wanted to show that to you because we've got something to play with later on now. We can, we can get together, we can start mixing, we can start adding flavors and trying to infuse other types of flavors. Uh, I've had a couple of calls about that, about how to impart flavors as opposed to using e uh, essence and extracts. And uh, we're going we're gonna to start to delve into that just a little bit more uh, at later on videos. We'll try to use some fresh fruits and things like that. But what I did in the meantime, over a little over a week ago, we also did our last concentrate 100% um, Welch's grape juice. And at the same time we did that, if you recall, we stood right here and we were doing our, our well, a rum, uh, and we used 100% uh, unsulfured molasses and some rum yeast. And it's been all about, I think it's been like nine days. I've been using the, uh, the uh, blanket for the fast ferment to control the temperature. And I'll tell you, it has made such a day-night difference. I've been able to maintain about 70 degrees inside this bag throughout the day and overnight until I come back in the next day by just replacing frozen bottles of water. Now, um, that one's already been, that one has already thawed out. Uh, I put it in there yesterday morning, and this is the 4th of July, late in the evening, or afternoon. What I've got in here, you'll see though, is last week we put a pack of the Turbo Clear, and so it's cleared this, and I used the dark molasses, and what was, oh, it was so awesome because the molasses was so dark and half of it was crystallized, and we added about a gallon and a half of water, so we had a really, really high concentration of sugar, and we let that rum turbo yeast go to town on it, and right now we're down to almost one. I don't think we're going to get any lower because this was really, really thick. So what we're going to do now is we're going to transfer that into um, just one of my carrying bottles that I have here. And I'll have this set in the back room and I'll let that set for the next, oh my gosh, week or so. Um, we, and look, we've had this discussion many, many times. Will this turn into vinegar? Absolutely not. Um, unless I introduce... Uh, You've got to do a couple of different things. Remember, when a mash is finished and you've got a high content of alcohol, the ABV, alcohol by volume, first of all, it's going to be its own natural preservative. Stop and think of that, all right? It's alcohol. Second of all, if you leave it sealed and you don't allow oxygen to get to it, there's nothing else can happen to it except for it to sit there. Now, if you introduce the Acidobacter bacteria or if you somehow gather the mother or a piece of the mother from like an apple cider vinegar, excuse me, or another vinegar that's already been in the process of converting to vinegars and introduce that into here and then add oxygen to it, which is absolutely necessary for the process to take place. Well, then, yes, over several, several 
several weeks, it will turn into vinegar. And I know, you, it don't, I know you're scratching your head. Please, uh, if you call me and you want to talk about your mash that you made last week, turn to vinegar, as soon as it's finished fermenting, please don't waste your time. I'm just, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just going to agree and say, I understand. Okay, uh, you know, have a nice day. Dump it out, start all over. Um, I will never, I have never dumped one. Uh, I have never lost one due to it turning to something it can't turn to. So, oh, I hope that ends that conversation. Um, and, and if I've offended somebody, I'll apologize up front. But uh, if you want to discuss it, we can discuss it. But there are ways. Y yes, you can. But again, remember, you've got to work at it. It doesn't happen by mistake. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're not real convinced, are you? That, uh, okay, just give me a call later on. We'll talk about it. All right. Look, oh, we got, we'll turn our valve off. I'm going to remove the ball. And you can see that this, so the ball is full. And at the very bottom of this, I've already removed the ball once and cleared it. And it may be a little bit difficult to see. I get here sideways in the light, but I've got sediment up to about here, which is the result of uh, adding that super clear which has caused all the remaining sediment in this to settle to the bottom. Now, we've cleaned and we're going to attach the hose. Now, for those of you who already have one of these, you know that this hose and attachment comes with your fast ferment. So, it's not like you gotta buy something separate. The ball comes off, the attachment goes on, the hose goes into my jug. I love this process. I've already removed the airlock. Uh, because as soon as you open up the, the valve, it's going to suck air through here. Now I'll open up the valve, and there goes my rum right into the bucket. Now, this rum is already finished. I could put it right into the still and uh, start to run it, but uh, I prefer, um, I need this empty so that I can get something else going. Uh, so I'll just move this to the back room and let it sit there. So in the meantime, while this is empty, let me grab something. I want to show you something that we started working on yesterday and we're really, really proud of it. Now here we have some clove honey and I had a whole bunch of honey left over and it started to crystallize and I knew that I couldn't it, it, it wouldn't make any sense for me to try to uncrystallize it or, or mix it back up because it, it, you just really can't get it to, to fully liquefy after that. And it crystallizes because a little bit of oxygen gets in there and it settles and honey will do that. But the honey is still good. I couldn't sell it and I wasn't going to throw it away so I thought I'd ferment it. <laughs> Odd. Well, I actually had about four gallons of it and almost three quarters of it had crystallized. So I wound up with three five gallon jugs like this, filled up to about here with uh, pure honey. And I added the remainder of water and then that brought it to 1.095 on the uh, gravity scale, uh, which was pretty impressive. And I wanted to show you this because you can see the activity here. And if you can see close enough, um, let me see if I can't zoom in some. If, if you look at this, the, whoops, there we go. You can actually see the yeast moving around all by himself. You can hear it bubbling, but the yeast are starting to move all around. I find it really fascinating because this is life in action that you have had a, an opportunity to have a hand at. You didn't create it, but you've given it every opportunity to flourish. And you get to sit back and watch it. So it's, it's moving around and it's consuming all of those sugars. And this is going to take a while because, the, the, of course, the gravity is so high and it's such a very, very viscous medium to, to ferment. It'll take probably about three weeks or so before this finishes. So we'll get back to you by the end of that. And I've got, like I said, about 15 gallons of that. So I got to figure out something to do with it. Hmm. Go figure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually kind of looking around right now to see, to make sure that there's nothing in the way. Cause I was going to show you something. I got something to demonstrate, but I do have a clean, fast ferment now. So that's, that's available for later. I'll move that out of the way. And my rum is down here in my jug. 
And we've already shown you the uh, honey that's over there. I'm just going to leave that sitting on the counter for now. But you know those, those hoses uh, that you get and you use a hose to transfer with? And it's, you know, it's got all these spots that get all inside it and it's really hard to keep clean. I'll show you something. Now this, this is relatively simple to do, but I was surprised at how many people didn't know this. But once you clean it down, all you got to do is really rinse it good with hot water on the inside, spray hot water through it if you can, or run hot water through it. And then find your place that's kind of safe that you don't knock anything over and then use centrifugal force and give it a whirl. And what that'll do is you just don't want to knock anything over. There. And you'll notice that all the water will just about evaporate completely out of that. And you've got centrifugal force causing all that water to shoot out of your, uh, of your hose. And it won't leave all of them spots and uh, make you mad as hell next time you pick it up because you figured you didn't, and you did clean it good. Because, yeah, you know when you get them, they're real nice and clean, they're see-through, and then uh, after you use them one time, they're not. Well, that's why. So, hey, listen, until we see you next time, like us on Facebook, uh, check us out. We're going to work on the website. I'm committed to that. We're going to work on the website at some point in time. Uh, but I really enjoy doing the videos. We love serving the community. Uh, give us a call, 254-681-1760. You know the number. Happy distilling.